Okay, back again. The beast is religion. A formation of some kind of religion which gets everybody all hot and bothered. So they forget all about God and go into politics. Like what Jerry Falwell started in the 1960s. Okay. Christianity split in two in the United States at that point. Which is of course what M Matthew 25 11 is talking about. Five foolish virgins. And it wasn't just Falwell. He was, you know, it was all those guys who are still alive now talking about how wonderful Do Donald Trump is. Including Falwell's son at this point. Just total apostasy. Total, utter apostasy. And that's when the pro-life lie got invented. So that they could grab political power. Because they wanted to have some kind of counter to, you know, the, the Democrats who, they had their own little, I, you know, uh, idols that they were suddenly creating. Oh, we're going to defend the blacks. We're going to defend people of color. Well, they didn't use those terms then. Okay? They had been, they, the Democrats had been persecuting the blacks in the South for nearly 200 years. Actually, 100 years. Ever since Reconstruction. 100 years after Reconstruction. They were doing that, and suddenly they decided, well, we can get more political power if we, if we champion the blacks. And the, poor, the blacks didn't know any better. They were being mistreated for a hundred years. They, you know, they didn't have any time to, like, grow up politically. They were being mistreated by everybody. And now they're being mistreated in a new way. And so, the Rob Republicans, the Birchers, and all that. First of all, a whole bunch of Democrats who were against blacks anyhow got mad about the switch in policy and so they went over to the Republican Party in the 1960s and I was a kid then so I really kind of remember this all right I didn't know the Democrats had moved over but I remember what the you know the John Birchers were saying and and it's like oh you know politics 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 yeah beast Ride the religion into politics. Ride the religion into political power. That's always, you know, everything in the name of God, mom, and apple pie. The beast which was originally orgiastic, because people like being in orgies. Now they like to tell themselves how holy they are by their good deeds. Is also an eighth power. But is from, born from, the seven. Ek, ton, hepta. Okay? born of it. In other words, they want the political power so they use religion and ride it into the political power they want. And the religion is going to go to a destruction. In other words, whoever's the pope-like figure is going to is is born of the seven, part of the seven. Okay? It's considered separately only because this is religion versus that which is official political power. Alright? Ten horns, ten kings. That no brainer. We already saw that in Daniel 7. But notice, it's not the same ten kings. It's not talking about ten kings in Rome or past emperors of Rome because who have not yet received a kingdom? This has never been fulfilled till yet. Satan keeps trying to get, you know, some version of a Roman Empire that could be turned on a dime to turn on. But this has never happened. In other words, there, yes, it's going to be a ten-nation confederacy. And that's been taught by dispensationalists from time immemorial. Okay. Yeah. But you can't, like, look at Rome or some past empire and say which nations they're going to be. There's endless speculation due to Lindsay's book. Hal Lindsay, Late Great Planet Earth. Endless speculation as to which of the ten European nations are going to be in this. Honey, th it's not necessarily Europe. It could be... China, united with Russia, united with the United States, united with 
you know, I don't know, Japan. I mean, when we had World War One and Two, there were alliances and enemies. You had Germany and Italy and Japan and the Arabs on one side. And you had Britain and, well, France got taken over. You had Britain and the U.S. and, you know, who else? On the opposing side. Russia comes in at the last minute. Okay. It decides to play neutral in World War II. Alright, so this this is a stupid speculation. The point is it's going to be a ten nation confederation. You can't know which ones until it happens. And it ain't going to happen prior to the rapture. But it's going to trend. It's the most important thing to say. It's going to trend. The trend that got set in motion with Constantine joining church and state that the Seven Mountains people behind Trump are now doing the same thing is a trend of history. Because Satan doesn't know when the rapture is going to occur. And like you, he's looking at this prophecy and going, okay, let's see, what can I do to make this happen? Because while he badmouths God every chance he gets, he believes him. He doesn't believe in him, but he believes him. So it's like, okay, well this is my best shot then. Because God's giving he, Satan his best shot. It's, God's basically saying to Satan, look, I'll tell you everything in advance and you're free to do or not do with it what you want. And I'll even tell you the best way to try. But it won't work. That's why all this prophecy is there. It's for us to know and for the angels to know, hi, this is the way it's going to turn out. I'm not going to try and cause it to happen. I'm just God and I foreknow how it's going to work. And this is obviously the most effective way for it to work. And Satan looks at the information as, well, I don't believe you. I do believe you. Yes, I do believe you. Oh, yeah, that is the most effective way to work. And boy, oh boy, with Constantine, he gets it. And right now he's trying it with the Seven Mountains people behind Trump. If the rapture occurs tonight, like I started to say before, the U.S. could be the King of the North in Daniel 11. And what's really interesting, well, in a morbid way, is that Trump is so in love with Putin, probably because he's so in debt to Putin. Alright. So, King of the North now has a bigger meaning than it had, didn't it? You know, Daniel 11 is always talking about King of the North. Well, it's successively west because the the beast, the man of time, ends up being Rome. And if you'll if you'll think about it, the head was sort of northeast of Israel. All right, Babylon, and then it goes farther northeast when it moves down to Persia, and then it goes n northwest when Greece is the next inheritor, and it goes northwest even further when it becomes Rome. Okay. So, King of the North, Gog and Magog, well, that's at the end of the millennium, so that doesn't really count, but Gog and Magog also means Russia. Definitely means that. Okay, so King of the North, north of what? Jerusalem. And who's north of Jerusalem? Well, the United States is north of Jerusalem. Egypt is King of the South, or, you know, Southern nations. And the Kings of the East aren't the King of the North. So that leaves out probably, not necessarily, but probably, China, Africa. It doesn't leave out North Latin America except south of Jerusalem. So the United States could be the Antichrist country. And, oh wow, gee, Putin, oh, I love Putin. He's great. He's, he's a strong leader even though he murders people. He's a strong leader and a good leader even though he stole everybody's food money. In order to acquire power in 1991. Okay. So what if we became the USSA? And that's really freaking me out. Because I wrote a paper on it. 40 years ago. What if we became the USSA? 
under Trump, effectively the USSA. Because you don't know if Trump's a believer or not. You don't know if the people around him are believers or not. They can't get the gospel right. They don't use 1 John 1 9. They think you're supposed to ask for forgiveness. So they don't have the Holy Spirit in them. So are they saved? Could be. Because you can't tell. It's a mystery. Alright? But if they're not saved, if Trump's not saved, and the rapture happens, and however few of us are actually believers and say die, well not necessarily die, but just disappear. And it's not going to be like those rapture movies with the clothes that fall. <laughs> clothes that fall neatly folded to the sidewalk. Okay. Um, there could be only, at the time this happens, it could be that all the believers died regular deaths. And there's only one believer left. And that one just disappears. Well, person disappears. One person disappearing, nobody's going to think anything of it. Okay, so all those left behind movies should be left behind in the trash because they're not paying attention to scripture. Of course, they're part of the Seven Mountains click around Trump, so what do you know? Okay, maybe not all of them, but definitely some of them. Alright, so, seven past, seven total empires. Alright, five empires have already gone. One, Rome, still exists. The other has not yet come. Some version, change of form in the final tribulational empire. We don't know when it's coming. Satan doesn't know either. So he is constantly trying to create. A unity of church and state which he started with Constantine because that's the first time in history this happened so it's prototypical of the Constantinian trend prototypical of the Constantinian idea over and over and rehearse wash rinse repeat groundhog day daniel 9 26 is a bubble because christ died seven years early so the same historical trends that are depicted in daniel 9 26 keep on recurring and everybody's trying to get back to rome as recently as adolf hitler putin's big goal is to recreate the USSR and its bigger goal because that has always been the cachet of the Byzantine Empire is to have it reunite see it considered itself the Ro Roman Empire it considered itself the heir of Rome but it wasn't over the territory of Western Rome it would have liked that but Usually it's like, well, well, let's just keep the East. And Russia bought into it. And the Balkans bought into it. Because, you know, f pretty much, you know, after the Danube, maybe the Elbe. Everything East of that is Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, not Western Catholic. And they still spar with each other even to this day over who is more Roman. Who is more holy? So you can see that that's just a fight waiting to happen. Okay, so if today the rapture occurs, pretend you're the last believer alive. I'm, I died, but nobody, you know, it just seems like I died like any other human being dies. Okay, and all the other few believers, let's say that there's maybe, you know, 100,000 believers left in the world right now. Real believers who are saved. A lot of people calling themselves Christians, but they didn't believe that Jesus Christ paid for their sins. And so they're busy trying to repent or busy trying to, you know, do the sacraments or whatever it is in order to get saved. Well, that means they're not saved. I mean, they might be and not know it. Because all you had to do was believe in Christ. You might have done that when you were five. But let's say there are only 100,000 believers left on the planet right now. Out of six billion, nobody's going to notice I mean, that's how many, that's got to be at least how many people die every day. So if there's 100,000 Christians, and you know, they all just happen to die at once all over the world, nobody's going to notice. Because we're scattered. 
Or there might be, you know, a whole bunch of cushions in one place and an earthquake hits. And millions, uh, thousands die. Okay, but nobody's going to think that that's the rapture. Until there's one believer left. And that one believer has a certain amount of time that he needs to grow. And when his growth is done, that's when the rapture happens. And it's just one person dying. Oh, who cares? You see the point? And all these people calling themselves Christians, fake church. We had fake, we had fake temple in Revelation 11, and this is its counterpart, fake church in Revelation 17. Well, oh, see, Christ this, Christ that, and everybody's saying the name of Christ, but they don't believe in him. It's all political. The beast is the eighth and one of the seven. What's the name of the beast? Chrislam, Islam, Christianity, some other fancy name that they invent. You see? At that point, there will already exist, or will shortly come to exist, a ten-nation confederacy. Now the reason why it might be either one, first because Satan doesn't know when it's going to happen so he's always trying to make this structure ready to happen or happen, is that the day that the rapture actually happens, pretend there's one guy left, he dies, nobody knows there's a rapture. It's not a secret, it's here in scripture. So there's no secret about it. But you don't know how many believers there are on this planet. Everybody's always thinking, oh, millions of people are all going to die at once. And the guy's flying the 747. And there's 300 people in the 747. And they all disappear. And their clothes are left behind, including their false teeth. And the pilot, he, he, he disappears too. And the plane just crashes into the side of a mountain. No. First of all, who says that it's all going to happen... And, you know, in a blink of an eye, blink of an eye is used, but we're talking about God's eye. Alright, so it could happen like one guy from this place and another guy. One guy's going to the bathroom and he's gone. It doesn't have to be disruptive at all. And who's to say how many believers are left? Because the rapture doesn't happen until it, nobody else is going to grow unless the rapture happens. Okay, so how do people know the rapture happens? Because the day that the rapture happens, the two witnesses appear in front of the Holy of Holies, which is right now Islam, and says, Hi, sorry, you can't come in. And they have the power to shut the sky, and they have the power to zap you with their fingers with a bolt of lightning or whatever, you know, like Elijah had. And they announce, and it'd be on TV, you know that, Okay, well, raptures happen, and God's judging you. And everybody's going to say, oh, yeah, right. These are two actors who are paid by Trump or something. And, of course, the real Antichrist, if it is Trump, is going to be against those two guys appearing at the Holy of Holies. Keeping everybody away from the Temple Mount. That's what Revelation 11 is telling you. Okay, in addition to that, I'm uh, maybe high noon in every time zone. There's an angel flying around the world every day saying, he appears starting at the third year. Okay. Wow, 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 wow. You can go read it yourself in Revelation 9. Oh, no, that, that, that was, that's the second one. The first one is I forget what verse it's in but I want to say it's in Revelation 8 okay hi Revelation uh, believe in Christ believe in Christ the raptures happen which of course people are going to think it's a stunt by a funny pilot they're not going to believe it's an angel okay so you see how this works religion that's similar to the form that it used to be is not now because the Roman Empire didn't practice it because it wasn't Christian. Himself also an eighth and comes from the seven, but the seven, ten kings who have not yet received the kingdom. So the actual ten kings at the time have never been there before. 
all right but are yet similar to the past see because it's like one civilization is gaslit on the ashes of the next of the past one all right so you see how this is fine this is so easy to understand he's at one purpose and they give their power and authority to what the religious head and it's the religious head in Daniel 11 who starts speaking all those blasphemies. I am the Christ. I'm come back. They're going to be fooled. And, and the really scary thing about this is that in Islam and Christianity both, and Judaism too, all believe that there's going to be a Messiah coming. In Islam it's called the Mahdi. And specifically is identified as Jesus. They call him Isa. Okay? The Mahdi is supposed to usher in the golden period of, you know, the Muslim version of the millennium. Jesus comes back. They see, Islam teaches that Jesus really existed and he's really from God, but they don't teach that he's divine. And they actually don't even teach that he physically died, that he was just basically, like, magically substituted with somebody else. Okay, that's, I want to say it's in Surah 4 or verse, uh, Ayat, they call it the word for verse. I think it's Surah 4, Ayat 157, somewhere in there. I might be wrong about that one. I'd have to go look it up, but that's what came to my mind right now. Okay, so religion. The politicians give their power to the religion, the religious head, just like they're trying to do with Trump now. Religion is what made them, what made Trump get elected. Apostate Christians are the cause of Trump's election. Okay. Period. I, I mean, I, well, anyway. Religion. And they give their power and authority to the religion. In other words, Seven Mountains people want to take political power in order to turn this into a Christian nation. Right now. As I'm talking. That's going on right now. Rafael Cruz is part of it. Ted Cruz is part of it. Paul Ryan is part of it. It's, you know, the whole, all your, your major mainstream famous Christian leaders are part of it. They're riding the religious beast into political power and they just won. So it's very easy. And then Putin and, and Trump align with each other, then we'll have the USSA, and then the King of the North will straddle and bracket Europe. What's Europe going to do? Cave in. And then what do we have? We have war, baby. And this time it'll be white versus non-white. It'll be North versus South because all of the Southern nations, most of them, pretty much all of them, except maybe Argentina and some parts of Latin America, that, you know, they're non-white. China, China cultivates relationships with nations based on the idea that the Waigoren, the foreign white people, are out to, to, to hurt non-white people. And so when they go to Saudi Arabia, or they go to Latin America, or they go to some of the other countries, it's like, hi, you know, you're, you're black, we're yellow. You're brown, we're yellow. We're not white, and the whites hate us, so let's all get together and band together and defend ourselves against these terrible white people. You see how, how easily that can happen right now? This whole doctrine of antichrist and, you know, Trump possibly being an antichrist. He seems too dumb. But, you know, if Satan takes him over, he won't be so dumb. See the point? You don't know. And it's really plausible right now. Because this group calls themselves Seven Mountains. I don't know, could you ask for a bigger advertisement from God? All right, they give power to religion. And these will wage war against the Lamb, yeah. Everything about Seven Mountains wages war against the real God. My kingdom is not of this world, he said. 
So they make the kingdom of this world. The Lord turned it all down in the third temptation. Satan offered to give the Lord, who's already king, give him, give him all this, the kingdoms of the world. The Lord turned it down. These people are drooling to get it. They invent this big... F I cannot... I cannot... They invent the lie that abortion is murder. When the Bible says in like 500 verses, No, I created your soul at birth and it's the soul that's the real you. The body's just the house your soul lives in. And you're not even alive and that's just a house, an organic house. Just like a plant. Without your soul in it. Oh, we don't like that doctrine. We want to say that women actually give birth to something real. Not just organic parts like, you know, a plant with a seed that grows in the soil and it's all done to the seed. And it's sort of mindless. Yeah. That's what your body is. It's mindless. Once your soul departs from your body, Greek word for that is thanatos means the soul departing from the body that's causes death once that happens then ashes to ashes dust to dust you remember that verse so your body is not you it's your house okay even the ancients knew that because the word thanatos means the soul departs from the body so all these pro-lifers are basically just lying against the Bible. They don't care. Christ said you got to be born again. When he was born, he said a body you prepared for me. So the body is not him. It is a preparation, a house he lives in. That's Hebrews 10.5. Okay? I mean, I could go on and on about the proof on that. But they want to reverse scripture. They're waging war against the Lamb. And the Lamb, Christ, that's Daniel 7 again, will overcome them. Nikao. Because he is the Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with him are the called and chosen and faithful. Now, notice. Everybody gets called. Everybody gets chosen. But not everybody's faithful. So you can be saved and therefore elected because God elects to make a rule that anybody who believes in that his son paid for their sins is saved. Okay, so God made that choice in eternity past. Doesn't matter who you are, it's a blanket rule that God set. And then the call goes out to all of humanity, I believe in Christ to be saved. So you do, but that doesn't make you faithful. Faithful only comes when you're learning and living on Bible. And honey, I got to tell you something. I've been learning and living on Bible for the better part of 40 years. I wouldn't call myself faithful, but I am full of faith. Get the difference? Faithful. Actually, the Greek word is pistos. Right here. That's, that's not a, a religious term in the Greek. It is an economic term. It is a commercial term. The pistas is somebody who makes a contract. Okay? See? God abiding by His promises. Okay. King of Kings. Okay. And to those with him. In him. Remember, in Christ, in him. Are called and elect and faithful. Part of the contract. Faith is what you believe. You believe Jesus Christ paid for your sins. That makes you full of faith of the gospel. It's done to you. It's something you receive. Not a work. 
and I get filled up with doctrine when I use 1 John 1 9 and study under my right teacher always a male never a female I'm not teaching I'm witnessing I'm showing what the text says I'm witnessing to it that's not teaching okay so I am full of faith but it's his word pistis Greek word pistis no, I can't show that one to you here. No, because pistis is not used here. This is pistas versus pistis. Pistis is the actual content of like the Word of God. You know when it says articles of faith in English? That means the doctrines. I am full of doctrine. But do I discharge it? Do I execute it properly? Absolutely not. I would give myself an F. The more I know of this scripture, the more I realize, oh, honey, I'm no good. Okay? So it's not faithful, like, oh, see what a good person you are. person who thinks of that meaning doesn't have the slightest idea about what the faith is, and being faithful is not something that person knows. Okay? So, faithful means full of faith. Full of faith is something only God can do to you when you use 1 John 1 night and you sit on your teacher. God the Holy Spirit makes this stuff perspicuous to you. That's John 14, 26. And that's why I'm able to speak the way I am. Because he's making it perspicuous to me now. Okay? That's why so many people who are really, really smart and have lots of degrees after their names... And they're, you know, oh, this is dear Reverend so-and-so and dear Dr. so-and-so. They wouldn't know the Bible if it bit them, even though they can recite it in their sleep. So, these fake church, seven mountains type, originating from Constantine style paradigm, will hate the real God as they do right now and they will be conquered by him which they are right now God's judging Christians in the United States for all this and then those who are with him remember that um, well, I'll just show it to you Matthew 25 10 In the Greek Husterion da Well actually that's not it I'm confusing that with the other verse While they're in the act of leaving the bridegroom comes so the foolish virgins, Jerry Falwell and all the other politicizing Christians inventing the doctrine that's totally false of pro-life, they're leaving the stage while the bridegroom noisily comes. It was best scripture teaching also going on at the same time that these guys were forming. And the prepared ones, the one who wanted to learn and live on Bible under the Holy Spirit, under their right teachers, he closes the door the door. That's 1998 when that happens. That's how long this apostasy has been going on. So now, is it too hard to understand that they wage war against the Lamb? They've been waging war against Christ since the 1960s. Okay? Now, remember I talked up here about waters? Well, we're going to come to that next because my voice is going out.